Hey guys, welcome to a Taco Puppy Bark 17. I know it's been a while since we have a bark. Sorry, been busy with school and work and all that good stuff. But we're back today with a bark. And this bark um, is one I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. Um, especially over the last probably year and a half, I've really been thinking about it, really wanting to do it. This bark will be covering the company that was Crimson Star Media. It was a very small, um, I guess like, they were like a dubbing company here in Georgia that, um, just, just never made it. I want, I want, I want to um, title this bark, Taco Puppy Bark 17, The Rise and Fall of Crimson Star Media. Because it really did fall before it even got a chance to even get started. It won't be a long bark, just a pretty short one. Um, but just I want to cover them because it's been about two years now since the whole tragedy with that company happened. I didn't say tragedy because it wasn't tragedy. It was um, just a mess that happened with that company and really brought it down. Um, so I'm trying to shoot off the cuff here by by what I can remember by what I know. So some so don't take everything I say for a fact. They will look some things up and check for yourself and see what's what. But um, most of the stuff I'm going to say is pretty accurate, I believe. Um, Crimson Star Media was a company out of, I want to say Columbus, Georgia. Columbus or Noonan, Georgia. Um, very small company, but on the outside to the eye, they seem to be very legit, very, not smooth running, but you know, had their feet under them a little bit. Um, you go to Session Con, I want to say Session Con 2013, maybe 2014, they were there at Session Con. And that was the beginning of the end of them, pretty much. Um, they were at Session Con that year. Me, Robert, we all we went to the panel that night. And now to think about it, the time of the panel makes sense now, now to know everything but the panel was it was a late panel the panel was them auditioning people for the dub of the anime that they had i want to say it's half moon something i don't remember the exact name of the anime was i think like half moon something something like that and the I main that was what it was for it was for they were going to show us the anime and we're going to be able to dub an audition for the anime you're, we're, we're all otakus. That sounds amazing. Who doesn't want to be a voice actor in an anime? I mean, that's just what, you know, it happens. So, okay. Perfect. Things start off a little rocky. The panel was at, I want to say, 10-ish, maybe 10.30. Panel actually didn't start till about maybe 10.45. We stood outside for a long time, waiting for the panel to get started. It was a separating the groups of who was there to audition who was in and all that kind of stuff. It took a while. So after we got all that situated and organized, we got in the room. We sat in the room for another probably 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes because the guy who was the one professional out of everybody there, turns out, was the guy that was actually um, syncing the um, subtitles with the anime. And like I said, he was the one professional, turns out the only professional really there. And, um, he was doing this when we got there. He was still syncing everything together. Still trying to get the last final subs done. And all that stuff. So, that, that was fine. You know, we kind of ch kind of chit-chatted with the audience. Let us know about the company. How they were starting up. How where they planned to go in the future. All that good stuff. So, you no, know, everybody was there having fun, enjoying it. Okay. Then, after that, we finally got everything started. Watched the anime. Watched the first episode of the anime. Very, very good anime. I definitely recommend you looking it up and checking it out. It was very, very good. Watch the first episode of it. Um, everything kind of went smoothly from there. We talked more about the auditioning process, all that good stuff. And then the auditioning process was about to begin. The one flaw, the one, I guess, flaw or problem that I think I had with the audition process was that. Yes, I know you want to make sure that you get the best sample of the person's voice you can. But for a panel that's already late, um, you have to remember that most of these people at the con have been roaming around the con all day 
from probably 10 11 that morning to 10 11 that night to where they were in that panel. So you have to remember that the people were tired. They were auditioning people at a very slow pace. They would get you up there. The microphone he was using was small, but that was fine. Um, the same mic I used to record Taco Puppy most of the time, one of the little go mics. Which, but that was fine. Um, but it was, but they were auditioning people, three lines. I mean, repeating the same the same line of of um, same line three times. And it was just it was taking forever. Every person would do the same line three times. The next person three times, and it was just slow, slow, slow. We ended up leaving the panel probably around. Well, and when we left, there was there were probably no, you know, you know how panel rooms are. They're not the biggest rooms in the world sometimes, depending on where the, the um, depending on where the con is. But the room probably had about sixty people in there. We left. They only auditioned probably, probably five, maybe ten, but probably around five, maybe six people. And it was it was slow. People were starting to kind of like, eh, well, maybe we should stay, maybe we shouldn't stay. Some people wanted to leave. Some people were leaving. When we and we finally just said, you know, it's getting twelve o'clock. We're an hour away from where this con is. As an hour we got to drive back home. We got work and school the next no next couple of days. We're gonna get home and relax and rest. So we just ended up leaving. And so you know we left. They had on their web on their website where you could submit um um an audition online. That's fine, perfect. A couple months later, they had panel. They were going to be at AWA, which is the Anime Week in Atlanta. They had they were going to be at MomoCon. They were going to be. I mean, they had cons, NerdCon in Columbus. They had cons lined up repeatedly, and that was great because it's like okay, there's more chances that you can you know audition. Okay. Then we fast forward a few months later. Fast forward a few months later. Turns out that the one of the head guys of Crimson Star Media. Well, he was a pedophile. Yeah, he had been arrested for child pornography. And it was like, oh, okay. Well, of course you know, at Cullens, Cullens have people of all ages, from very small children to adults. So, you know, you can't really be at a con around children if you're a pedophile. That's just kind of how the rules work. So, that was strike one. Okay, he's at a con around children and not supposed to be there. But then it takes you back to, okay, that explains why his panel was at, why a just normal auditioning voice, auditioning for an anime panel was at like 10 at night. Maybe he figured, if I do the panel late, no, no, no small children will come and nobody will really know anything is different. I mean, but there's a thing called Google, and there's also public records you can find online. So yeah, so that's strike two. I mean that that, that was that was the beginning of the end. Then once he got arrested, it was all on Anime News Network. Um, more things going down, going down, going down. The guy who actually I told you about that was doing the um syncing the audio with the um lit with the not lyrics, ooh, the with the with the words. Was um actually on the forums on A N N, and he was telling everybody he was keeping everybody updated on what was going on, telling, talking to different people on there, letting them know what was happening, and it turned out it was just a mess. Um, that guy, um, had only not even bought the full rights to the anime yet. He had just kind of partially bought. Partially purchased the anime, and then I think he never fully paid the the um Japanese company for the anime, so he didn't really even have the rights to be dubbing the anime. Um, I think he hadn't paid the guy who was subbing. I think he hadn't paid him yet. It was just a big mess, a big cluster, and it turned out that he really hadn't done anything. Not a um uh, along with being the child pornography thing that was. A whole separate topic, and he's getting arrested. If I'm not mistaken, he's in jail currently. Don't no, no, don't count me on that. You may have looked that part up and see for sure, but I'm pretty sure he's in jail now. And I mean, that was basically the fall because there's no company, there's no anime, there's no anything, 
And I feel I felt bad because me personally, I wanted to audition for the anime. But I felt bad for the seven five to seven people who actually did get a chance to audition that night at the Cullen because he got their hopes up. They 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 were there thinking that okay we're auditioning for this probably not going to get it but hey we have the chance to audition for this anime we may even get the part because they were they were a small company so being a small company you figured they might they you know using using just say fan auditions and fan voices is a good way to get started you know I've I've seen plenty of horrible dubs done by professional companies. I mean, have you ever seen the Inuyasha Final Act dub? Not the, not the Viz Media dub. The oh man, I, I want to say Ocean Somebody. Their dub, it's out there. If you go, some of the you know the fan fan sub sites is out there. It's it's horrible. It's garbage. It's so bad. But I'm saying, but they're a professional company, and their dubs are horrible. So you know, small companies can afford to use fan. And fence um voices for their first anime. That's fine. So they got their hopes up, thinking that they're going to be able to be in the anime, and then all this other stuff happened. And I mean, to think that he could be able to go to a con where kids are, and nobody, no. First of all, first of all, first of all, we live in Georgia, between where I live and Atlanta, which is where the con was. There's in between you got Columbus and Noonan and places like that. All which are yes, they're kind of big towns, but they're also small towns. People know everybody. And if I'm not mistaken, that's how this whole thing got spiraled out of control because somebody at the club recognized him and they knew that he was a pedophile. And then it just went from there and it just collapsed. And the, for him to think that he could go to a con where there are tons of people and nobody recognizes him. First of all, here in Georgia, I mean, if you're in Otaku, not just even in Georgia, if you're in Otaku, you're going to be in a small group of people anyway, as far as friends and as far as people into the same thing you're into. So, how did he not think if somebody would recognize him, somebody wouldn't know? And I, I want to say also, it turned out that he had tried to start another company before and it also failed. I think he did some um fan does fan subbing himself on YouTube when he was doing the voices for the anime and I think that was something he was doing also. It sounded like he was just kind of a con man for like he he wanted to try to do stuff but he he never went the right way of doing it and he was kind of a con a little bit. And so once he went to jail everything kind of you can still Google them. And last time I checked, the website is still up. The Twitter still is active. And I think the Facebook is also. And you'll see where they had dates lined up and where they had coming up soon. The anime, this, 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 this. And, I mean, everything's still there. Like, it never happened. But it was just one of those things that where, like, like if Like, it just feels weird because I was there. I know I, I was there. I experienced that Crimson Star Me. I experienced that audition process. I experienced all of those things. And then, all of a sudden, it was over. As, as quick as it started, it failed that fast. And it was just something that, you know, I felt privileged to be a part of because it was them starting. But also, it's one of those memories that you have that you just, you know, what it could have been, and then you know what it turned out to be. And it just, it's a shame that it went that way. I don't know who all he had involved business-wise, but it's a shame he had to basically use them and then cost them money. And it's just a shame that everything happened, and it was pretty much on him. Because, I mean, okay, yes, he was a pedophile. That that part's true. That's out there. That, that, part's, that part's definitely true. If you want to start an anime company and you have those sort of legal problems and those those things, you can have a panel. Just don't be at the panel. Like, there, there was no rule that he had to be there. There was another lady there with him. 
I'm sure she was more than capable of explaining what the company was, what they were doing, without him being there. She could have operated everything. I'm sure if somebody else, I'm sure he could have somebody else show up and be there with him. Like, there was no need for him to have to be there. And I can't help but think that if he was not there, then these problems wouldn't have happened. But also, with him being a pedophile, maybe it's good he was there. Because he needed to be caught. And he needed to have to pay for whatever he has done. Child pornography and all that stuff. I mean, so it, so in a way, it's good that he was there because he was caught. And who knows what could have happened after that. But at the same time, there was no need for him to be there. Anybody could have been there representing the company. I mean, he was just, he, there was no need for him to be physically there at the con. And so, it was just a big, big mess. And, like I said, I felt privileged that I was able to experience that. But, it was just, it was a shame because the company could have done such good things. Being in Georgia, being in a small town, would have gave them the opportunity to, like I said, give fans here in Georgia opportunity to be voice actors, to do some animation, to do Things of that nature, and it just, it's a shame that it just did not work out. Um, to this day, I don't know what the other people are doing. The guy, as far as I know, he was a pretty professional, um, or pretty well-known, um, I, I, I don't know what you would call him. He, he, but he, he syncs audio. He was a pretty professional, well-known guy. I think he had worked on some more animation before. So he was well known. He still does his thing as far as I know. Everybody else said for the company, as far as I know, they're just there's nothing. And so, um, yeah, that was I just wanted to kinda of hit on Crimson Star Media, the downfall, the rise and the fall of the <laughs> sorry about that. The rise and the fall of the company. Um I think it was an experience. Um I'm glad I was there to experience that. It was definitely something I won't forget. But it's a shame that it didn't take off and that it didn't succeed the way it probably should have. Um, so I just wanted to hit on that because I haven't seen too many people over the years talk about it too much. I just wanted to hit on it. You know, it's an old topic. It's something that definitely I want to talk about and get out there and just because it was, like I said, it was, it was something that was kind of special that just didn't didn't work. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. I'm not going to run too, too long. Um, be on the lookout for another Bark. Probably coming up in a few months. Um, but now we get some free time. There'll be two more Barks coming up soon. And then, I will be doing Forgotten Anime 2 on the blog. And it will be about Vampire Night. I did the first one on Darker Than Black. This one will be on Vampire Night. Because I feel like it's also an anime that's been forgotten. So, yeah. Um... I think that's about it. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Otaku Puppy Bark 17. And until next time, as we say here, Maho out!